Hello everyone, this is Shukufe Mirzai from Kalpoe Pomona and in this lesson we are going to continue the sensitivity analysis of a linear programming problem. We are in part two of the series of the videos related to sensitivity analysis and we are going to explore six changes in the linear programming parameters that changes the optimal table. The first change that we are going to explore is changing the objective function coefficient of a non-basic variable. The second change is changing the objective function coefficient of a basic variable. The third change is changing the right-hand side of a constraint. The fourth change is changing the column of a non-basic variable. The fifth one is related to adding a new variable or activity. And the last one that we're going to review is adding a new constraint. Let's look at the first change, which is changing the objective function coefficient of a non-basic variable. The first change that we're going to explore is changing the objective function coefficient of a non-basic variable. Usually in sensitivity analysis, we are trying to see the impact of changing the initial problem coefficients in the final optimal table. So we are usually given the initial problem statement, we are given the optimal table, and uh, we also have our formula in hand. So what we want to do, our objective, is to see by changing some of the coefficients in the initial problem how the final table changes. Now the things that we can change are the coefficient of objective function, the coefficients in the constraints, as well as the right-hand side of the problem. Now when we're changing the coefficient of the objective function, depending on whether the decision variable associated to that coefficient is a basic decision variable or is a non-basic decision variable solve for the sensitivity analysis differently. In this case, we are trying to investigate the change in the objective function coefficient for a non-basic variable. If you look at the optimal table that is given for this problem, S1, X3, and X1 are the basic variables in the final optimal table of the simplex. So if I change the coefficient of these decision variables in the objective function, then we have changed the coefficient of basic variables in the objective function. But if I change the coefficient of variables that we don't see in the basis here, which are x2, s2, and s3, then we have changed the coefficient of non-basic variables in the objective function. And in this lesson, we are going to investigate the change in the coefficient of x2, s2, or s3, which are the non-basic decision variables, because out of the six decision variables in this problem, which are x1, x2, x3, and s1, s2, s3, we only have these decision variables in the basis. We call them basic variables. The rest are non-basic variables, and their values are equal to zero. Now, suppose that x1, x2, x3 are three products that are produced in a manufacturing plant. An objective function is the profit of the company and is maximization of the profit gain from these products. Now assume the company was able to increase the profit of the second product to $32. What is their recommendation to the manager in this case? Do you suggest changing the production plan or do you think we have to stick with the same production plan in this scenario? X2 is the second product. Currently the profit associated with X2 is 30 if we change the profit from 30 to 32, we want to see whether it will change the production of X2, X1, or X3, or the production plan would uh, stay the same. This is important, especially because X2 right now is not being produced. It's a, it's a non-basic variable, and its uh, production is equal to zero. So let's answer this question using the uh, formulas that we introduced in the first part of the sensitivity analysis lesson. So if you look at the formulas that are given in this table, if you change the coefficient of a non-basic variable, such as x2, the only formula that you would see the impact of a non-basic variable coefficient is here. So what happens is you have to recalculate the coefficient of the non-basic variable in the row of z and see whether it's positive or negative. If it's positive or zero, then we are still in the same table. But if it becomes negative, then we have to continue the table and come up with a better solution. It means that we have not reached the optimal solution and we have option to improve the final solution to a better answer. So let's recalculate the coefficient of x2 with the change that is proposed here and see whether it's 
profitable to produce X2 or we have to suggest the same production plan and X2 doesn't become a basic variable. Becoming a basic variable, it means that it's going to have a positive value in the right hand side and therefore we start producing it. So currently we, ha we have $30 as the profit for the second product or uh, C2 is 30, but then we introduced a new C2, which is 32. And we know that X2 is a non-basic decision variable. So again, we have to form the matrix CB. If you recall, CB is the coefficient of basic variables in the objective function. And I keep the order of the basic variables as it's shown here in the final table and find the related coefficient of S1, X3, and X1 in the objective function. If you remember, we introduced uh, the coefficient of S1 in the objective function is 0, for X3 is 20, and for X1 is 60. That's how we form this XBV and uh, the, the, its associated coefficients. Now, the second part of this formula is B inverse A related to X2 because we are solving for X2. But the B inverse A is already calculated in the, the final table. So remember, we have B inverse AJ here. So in fact, the column under X2 here, it's the B inverse multiplied by this vector. So we don't need to calculate that part. We can just copy from the final table this vector that is given here. So we have CB, B inverse AJ. Now the, uh, the, the rest is CJ. So for CJ, I can put the new CJ that I have, which is 32, but it's common that instead of that, we calculate for any given delta. So we can say 30 plus delta is the new CJ. And then we try to find the range of delta for which the whole coefficient is positive. So instead of uh, writing 32, I try to solve this problem for a more generic answer. And if you multiply this vector and then deduct the value of 30 plus delta from that value and enforce the positive um, condition, you will find a range for delta for which the coefficient of x2 in the row of z is positive. So for any delta less than or equal to 5, you are uh, having a positive coefficient in the row of z and thus you are still in the same optimal table and therefore your production plan doesn't change. It means that x2 remains as a non-basic variable because its value remains as zero and it remains outside the basis. Now in this scenario, the delta is the difference between the new c and the old c. So we can write this and c new minus c old is equal to c new minus 30, which if we solve it for the range of c new, it says that if your new coefficient is less than or equal to 35, for x2, you're going to have the same optimal answer. So right now your coefficient is 32, 32 is less than 35, so you remain in the same optimal table. So as a result, since 32 is less than 35, we don't recommend the production of X2. Now let's look at the case where your change is so that the final table doesn't remain positive and we have to continue the table. Let's look at another change in this table. Again, X2 is a non-basic variable because we don't see it in the basis here. We want to know what is the impact of changing the coefficient of X2 to 36. Now, if you recall in the previous slide, we showed that the uh, coefficient of X2 is equal to 5 minus delta. Now, in this scenario, what is delta? The value of delta is the difference between the new coefficient and the old coefficient. This time from 30, we're going to 36, so the delta is 6. If I calculate the new coefficient for um, X2, it will be negative 1. Now, negative 1 is a negative value that will replace the coefficient of X2 in the row of Z in this scenario. So we are not going to remain in the same optimal table, and we have to continue the table. So let's replace the new value for the coefficient of x2 in the row of z. And again, we have to implement the most negative value and minimum test uh, procedure here. Uh, if you don't know what we are doing in this uh, phase, you have to go back to the video related to simplex and come back to this video. Since we are solving for a maximization, we go for, uh, with the most negative value in the row of z, which is the negative 1 related to x2. So X2 is going to enter the basis in the next phase, which means that we are going to start producing X2 because X2 this time replaced X1 and gets a positive value. We're not going to produce X1. 
And it kind of implies that the increase in the profit of X2 right now has been enough to justify its production. And so we're not going to produce X1, instead we're going to produce X2. But we have to continue the table until we get to the final optimal table. Maybe in the final table, we are producing both X1 and X2, but in this iteration, we're going to replace X1 by X2. Now, to figure out what is the decision variable that we exit the basis, we have to implement the minimum test. And as you remember, we just uh, do it on the positive terms of the pivot column, which is only 5 divided by 4. So th this is the only option that I have for a minimum test. Minimum test is dividing the right-hand side values by the positive value of the pivot column, which since we only had one positive value in the pivot column, 5 divided by 4, we only have one option, so x1 is going to be replaced by x2. So in the next table, I have to make sure that 5 divided by 4, which is our pivot value here, um, gets a value of 1, and everything else in this column becomes 0. So to do this operation, I have to multiply the row related to x1 by 4 divided by 5 to be able to generate the uh, value of 1 that I want. If we implement this operation, this is the row related to x2 that we get. Now, using this row here, or the pivot row in the previous table, you have to manipulate the other rows so that their value under the x2 are 0. For example, to change the negative 2 to 0, I have to multiply this row by 2 and then add it with this row up here. So um, if you have problem doing the elementary row operation, uh, please go back and review the simplex video. Now if I implement this elementary row operation for this uh, second and first row, these are the new value that I get. Also to make x2 a basic variable, we have to manipulate this row so that the basic um, variable condition for x2 holds. So it means that we have to change negative 1 this time to 0, not the value of 5. This is the new row of z that you have to change. So if I want to uh, change the negative 1 to 0, I have to simply add these two rows because one is the pivot row here and this one is the row of z. If you just add these two rows, you're able to generate 0 in the row of z for the variable x2. Now since everything at the uh, in the row of z is positive or zero, we have reached the optimal table, and whatever it's outside the basis, our non-basic variables, and their value is zero. In this case, we have x1, s2, and s3 that are outside the basis, and their value is zero. For the rest, their value is equal to the right-hand side. So S1 here is equal to 27.2, and then you have X3 equal to 11.2, and then X2 is equal to 1.6. Now you can replace these values in the objective function and see you're getting the same objective function that we have um, reached here. So your Z star or the optimal value of z this time is 281.6. This was the original objective function. If you remember, we changed the coefficient of x2 from 30 to 36. Now, if I use the value of uh, decision variables up, I have obtained in the optimal table and put it here, this is the value of objective function that you get, which confirms that we have reached the uh, correct uh, calculation of z value. One thing that you have to pay attention is by changing the profit of the second uh, product, $6, your final profit only has changed by $1.6. The increase is proportional, but it's not equal. That's why we have to calculate the table and uh, do the sensitivity analysis so that we can understand what is the final impact on the value of objective function. With this, our lesson has concluded in the first change of sensitivity analysis, which is changing uh, the coefficient of a non-basic variable in the objective function. In the next lesson, we're going to investigate the second change, which is changing the coefficient of a basic variable in an uh, objective function.